Hey hockey player, Coach Garner here from HockeyTraining.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through a no equipment needed total body workout for youth hockey players right from our youth off-season program. Let's get into it here. First exercise we're going to be rolling through is a front foot elevated split squat. Your front foot elevated split squat, we're going to be doing this for four sets of 8 to 15 reps per leg with one minute rest in between. You're going to have one foot planted up. You always want this to be lower than your knee and ideally only about halfway up the shin, especially to start. This exercise is excellent for what's known as structural integrity. And structural integrity is actually one of the key focuses of this phase two workout that's in the youth off-season program. You're going to be here. You're going to have a great posture. You're going to have one knee up, hands up, all the way down and back up. Don't touch the ground, but get very close to it. Nice and controlled tempo, keeping my posture. The front foot elevated split squat is great in that earlier phases of the off season because you can see the degree of hip extension that I get here. There is a lot of hip mobility aspect to this exercise. And beyond this, this is one of the best exercises to reinstate knee stability postseason for hockey athletes. So the structural integrity, and when I say structural integrity, I mean creating a balanced body from the left side to the right side and the upper body to the lower body. Complete those front foot elevated split squats to be the first exercise of this workout. Your second exercise is going to be the bird dog. The bird dog exercise is a great exercise for hockey athletes and it's specifically good for training the posterior muscles, so all the muscles in the back, in a body weight only workout. It's pretty hard to hit your back muscles unless you have barbell, dumbbell, something like that. But a bird dog is a great way to hit the back exercises for posture and overall athletic structural integrity. So you're going to be here on all fours and with a bird dog you're going to raise your right arm and your left leg. So diagonally I'm going to contract hard at the top bring them back down. Same one. Up, down. All the way up. Contract at the top. I'm contracting my shoulder blade and my glute here and I'm bringing them back down. The bird dog, you're going to perform this for three rounds of 15 to 20 reps per side with one minute rest. But always do one side completely before moving on to the next. This is great for hockey athletes because one thing hockey athletes run into is some posture issues. When you're out on the ice, you are constantly in a state of hip flexion. When you're always in hip flexion and holding your stick, it means you're in hip flexion, but also shoulder flexion. So you've got internal rotation. A lot of hockey players are pretty tight. If they do something like this, they feel a lot of tension here. And that's because they're always internally rotated, but they're also always in flexion at the hip as well. Bird dog helps reinstate structural balance for your posture so that you're a more balanced athlete without movement inefficiencies that might be holding back your speed or conditioning out in the ice. So it's a great exercise by any standard of measurement. Next, you're gonna move on to the classic push-up. Honestly, one of the most underrated exercises in the game. People talk about exercises like the very fancy ones as if they're somewhat, for some reason better because they're fancy. Look, tried, sorry, new and improved hardly ever beats tried and proven. So push-ups are always thrown in there, especially for youth athletes who do really well with body weight only resistance based workouts. Push-ups, you're going to be doing three rounds for, eight, for uh, sets of 8 to 15 and you're going to take one minute rest in between. I'm going to be in my normal push-up stance, nothing fancy here, chest and chin to the ground and back up. Keeping my elbows nice and close to my body. Do those for 8 to 15 to build the upper body strength and power that's important that you need for keeping people off, of you, off the puck, staying strong in front of the net, um, keeping people away from you because of the tricep strength that you gain from push-ups, and of course, building up the anterior deltoids of the shoulder as well. Push-ups are a very, very good exercise for hockey athletes, especially in these youth years. Next, you're gonna move on to the sprinter step-up. Now, the sprinter step-up, you're gonna need an implement that is 
roughly around knee height or just under knee height, but higher than what you did for the split squat. Now the sprinter step up, you're gonna perform for three rounds of eight to 15 reps per leg. And you essentially wanna take on the stance and the explosive power of a sprinter, but do it step up style. So I'm gonna drive this leg forward, but since contralateral cross body power is needed in athletic performance, I'm gonna drive up this hand. So I'm gonna be here, here, here. And if you get a little bit more advanced with it, you can start lifting this and heel up and being a little bit more explosive with it. That's how you perform a sprinter step up. You're gonna be doing those sets and reps, which is three rounds of eight to 15 per leg with one minute rest in between um, for that exercise. Now the sprinter step up is great because it builds strength, power and muscle mass in the lower body but it does it in a way that's a little bit more balanced. This is all structural integrity. Does it in a way that's more balanced for hockey athletes. Why is it balanced? Because it's unilateral. We're not just doing both legs pressing at the same time where a dominant leg could make up for the slack of a weaker leg. You can do that in bilateral movements, but in a unilateral movement, you are strengthening the legs. So if there is any strength discrepancy from, right to, from left to right or from right to left, if there's any strength or size discrepancy, they get solved very early in the off season by doing unilateral drills. So this helps structural balance, strength, power, and then it also helps hockey athletes develop, um, uh, create, uh, essentially a state of balance where they don't have one dominant leg. So I don't want you to only have to, to take off on your right leg in order to be explosive out in the ice. You should be able to take off on your right and your left and be as ex equally as explosive so that you're explosive from all angles out there on the ice. Next exercise you're going to be performing here is the last one and it is the bicycle crunches. Bicycle crunches are an exercise that are ground based and we're gonna be rotating. And it's one of the rare exercises that will hit your lower abdominals, your upper abdominals and your rotators. So I'm gonna be here. I have one leg close to the ground but not touching. One leg up and then I'm gonna to be touching my elbows to my opposite knee here. Alternating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Since my leg is extended in the bottom position, my lower abs are being targeted to hold it up, but since I am twisting up at the top, my upper abs are being targeted as well, but my rotators are since I'm going as far as touching my knees. So you're getting a very well-rounded core effect here and also a core stabilization effect by needing to keep that leg up off the ground. And the core is something that all hockey athletes should be including in their programs in some way, shape or form at all times because core is something that allows you to transmit power from your lower body to your upper body out in the ice. If I'm taking a slap shot, I am loading my lower body before I go into it. If I'm skating, I am loading my lower body, but the way in which I am able to transmit that power in an athletic setting depends entirely upon if my core is able to handle it and transmit it properly. This is an exercise that doesn't just improve core strength. It's an exercise that improves total body athletic movement, especially if you'd have a weak core to begin with, especially so. So you're gonna be doing that for three rounds of 15 to 20 per side with 60 seconds rest. And that is going to be the end of the workout. That is an example workout from the youth off season program, specifically phase two of the structural integrity work in our program. If you want more information on how a youth athlete can become a better hockey athlete and do everything that they need to do in order to be that go-to player out in the ice, youth players and youth parents, you got to click on the link in the comment section below and download the free MVP youth hockey package. It's got everything you need. I'll see you in there.